Does the thought of teaching math to your kids make you nervous? Have you ever found yourself staring at a fraction problem and wishing you could just hide in the pantry with some chocolate instead? <laughs> Maybe you're wondering how on earth you're supposed to teach something that once made you cry. Well, you're in the right place because today we're tackling homeschool math. If we haven't met, I'm Kim with Not Consumed Ministries. We help families grow in faith so that they're not consumed by life. Today, I wanna to share with you a basic plan for homeschool math, K through 12, as well as some tips and tricks I've learned along the way. Well, let's start at the beginning. Math should be super fun. Okay, if I'm being honest, math is not super fun for me. And maybe it's not super fun for you either. Truth be told, I cried all the way through my calculus exam in college. Math was always a tough subject but a necessary one. And that's where we need to start. Before we can tackle the how, we need to start with a strong why. When I first began homeschooling, I challenged myself to come up with biblical reasons why I was teaching everything I was teaching so that I could keep it in the right perspective. So why do we teach math? First, math helps us to understand creation. That's pretty hard to do if you don't understand the mathematical way that things work together. Second, math helps us to see God's perfect order. And third, math helps us to manage what God has given us financially. We need to be good stewards, not in debt, not filing for bankruptcy. We want to teach our kids these skills through the mathematics education we're giving them. For a Christian, the purpose of math is to better help us to behold the incredible glory of God through a more exact understanding of creation and the world around us. Math helps us understand the miracle of it all by helping us better define and explain it. I love telling my kids this truth. After all, the Bible tells us to work as if we're working for the Lord, which includes our school, and it tells us to obey our parents. But knowing that the subjects we're learning help us to better know God, understand our faith, and to defend it to others is far more motivating than the first two. Now let's dig into how to actually teach math starting in preschool and kindergarten. I'm not a big fan of curriculum at this stage of the game. I think your best bet as a parent is to talk about math in a natural way. Have your kids count, subtract, add, divide, and multiply real things like real objects in your house. This happens naturally if you're engaged with your kids. For example, you bake some cookies and you sit down with your kids and say, hey Leah, how many cookies do we have? Oh, we have eight cookies, nice counting. Now let's divide, yeah, use the word divide, those cookies evenly among your siblings. How many cookies are each of you going to get? It's really important that we use those real words and help our kids get used to that kind of language because that's one of the biggest barriers when it comes to math. If we're teaching them the actual words, then when they see them in a formal math lesson, they already have the experience. It's not so foreign to them. Of course, the first time you use the word divide, your kids might not know what that means. That's understandable. You can go ahead and explain it by further giving them instructions. During pre-K and kindergarten, your main goals are to learn shapes, colors, number recognition, and how to talk about math and mathematical things. That's really it. Our pre-kindergarten curriculum all around town and our kindergarten curriculum backyard and beyond follow this formula of early learning. Kids learn basic skills in a natural way as they're exploring the world around them. I'll link that in the description if you wanna check it out. Well, let's talk about the basics. Math is a subject systematically built on tiny blocks of information. If you miss the foundation, the top will crumble, period. Sadly, this is why so many kids struggle in math. Take the time to lay the foundation and be sure you get a math curriculum that makes this the focus of elementary school. The two skills we focus on are skip counting and basic math facts, addition and subtraction. We start skip counting as early as possible with fun jingles and songs. My personal favorite is the skip counting songs written by Classical Conversations. You can buy the CD even if you aren't part of their group. There are also many other options out there. My older kids were vigilant with learning skip counting and as a result, learning multiplication was a lot easier. My son, not so vigilant. <laughs> okay, maybe mom wasn't on the ball. I don't know, either way. We quickly realized multiplication was a much bigger struggle until we went back and did it the right way. Laying the foundation here is key. For math facts, daily practice is required until your kids have mastered addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Be careful because most math curriculum does not cover this in depth enough. They move on to other topics and kids get lost. 
Don't let that happen. Focus here, even if nothing else gets done. If you focus on getting the basic facts very strong, the other stuff will be simple to pick up on later on. We use extra math for daily fact practice. I'll link it in the description. It's xtramath.org. I've used so many different things, but this one wins every time because each child has a login and can practice the exact facts that he or she is struggling with. The website is intuitive and that makes mastery much easier. Oh, and it's totally free. It's not super cool looking like the Bingo Bugs app, but it's effective and kids only have to suffer through the boring interface for about five or 10 minutes a day. They can handle that. Once your child gets into first grade, this is when it's time to move to a formal curriculum. My favorite is Christian Light Education or CLE. Now, there's a few things I love about CLE. One, it's very simple. Two, it's pretty cheap. And three, it comes in little booklets. 10 of them throughout the year for the child. So it's not as overwhelming as a large textbook might be. But most importantly, the entire goal of this curriculum is to help your kids gain independence. And that's exactly what the first and second grade should be all about. CLE is also really strong on math facts, which is very important as we've established. I find that a lot of curriculum is very, very weak on math facts. And like we said, math facts are absolutely the foundation to math success, so we can't skimp here. If your child does not grasp these, you need to go back and keep doing it. If you move on and you go into those higher level concepts and your child is still struggling with quick recall of addition, subtraction, and multiplication and division facts, they will not succeed in math. We want to make sure that our kids really have a strong foundation in that. That's why I'm stressing it so much. <laughs> All right, third grade and up is where things get awesome. In our family, we moved to the much beloved, longest ever running curriculum for us, teaching textbooks. The reason I love teaching textbooks so much is because it teaches the lesson for me, taking me out of the equation so I'm freed up to help the other kids, and it gives kids the necessary practice without overwhelming them with busy work. I love that it's self-grading. They automatically know if they've gotten it wrong so that they don't do an entire math sheet completely wrong. When that happens, it's teaching them to do things incorrectly. It's training them to think the wrong way because we didn't catch the mistake the first time. I love that teaching textbooks fixes this problem with immediate feedback. So let's talk about four math rules that will decrease your frustration with the subject. First, your kids need a 90% mastery or better in order to move on to the next lesson. Why? Because math is about mastery. Math continues to build. We have to make sure that they're mastering everything that they do. This means that you're gonna to need to grade it every single day. That's why I like teaching textbooks. It does it for me. My second math rule is to use a cheat sheet. My kids use the reference charts from Christian Light Education. What I love about this is it gives them a point of reference when they're working on problems. Number three tip for math, always write it down. Each of my kids got a notebook for math. It was just a spiral bound notebook with nothing in it. It's basically glorified scrap paper, but it reminds the kids that they've got to write the problems down because they will not be successful if they don't. Picking a fun notebook makes it a little bit more engaging. Number four, if you're struggling with a concept, first step is to go back to the lesson where you learned that information the first time. One really cool thing about teaching textbooks is that when you're doing the problem, they actually tell you where you first learned the concept. So you can go back and listen to the lecture again. I love that feature. But let's say you've gone back and you've listened to it again and you're still not really sure. Google it. <laughs> there are many websites that can help you that have different videos that will show you a different way to maybe think about or work that problem or concept. And that will really help you and your kids to get over the hurdle. Let's get to high school. Most high school students will take the three standard courses of Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Geometry. Your student will need these in order to score well on the ACT or SAT if they're college bound. We still use teaching textbooks for this, and yes, my kids not only did well on the test, one of them got a full scholarship based on her scores. So while some may think that teaching textbooks is a little on the lighter side, it works just fine for most kids. After the three standard math classes, I like for my senior to take consumer math. It teaches math skills for real life, like how to budget, calculate income tax, and understand saving and investing. Even better, it fulfills one high school math credit. It's a curriculum designed to set your student up for success by giving them opportunities to actually practice using math skills in real world scenarios. They get to do projects on things that they are most interested in. Unless your student is on a STEM path and planning a career in math or science, consumer math is a far better option than trig or pre-calc because it sets teens up for success in the real world. I want to encourage you to have the confidence to teach math. 
you've got this. But if math feels like more than you can handle, rest assured you can always outsource it to a co-op or an online class. Your student might even take a math class at a local college and earn dual enrollment credit. Okay, that's it for math. I hope these tips and curriculum suggestions were helpful. We'll link to all of the things that I mentioned in the description below so you can find them easily. What's your favorite math curriculum? Leave me a comment and share it with others. Remember, you don't have to be perfect to be an amazing homeschool parent. You've got this and I'm cheering you on. See you in the next video where we will talk about teaching language arts.